Wherever you go, there you are, is a famous quote by legendary poet and author, Cliff Buzinski. And basically what that means, if you break it all down, is that trains always make for good video game levels. I love riding the train. And I think if you try to count the amount of train levels in video games with your fingers, well, you'd probably need a few more hands. Well, since the years start coming and they don't stop coming, fed to the rules and I hit your mum running, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at a bunch of train levels in FPS games. So hop aboard the G-Train Express, Sunny Jim, and let's do this. Hold on tight. The ride might get a little... bloody. Bring it on. Alright, well, it would be impossible to talk about train levels without talking about one of the best train levels of all time with the Phantom Express in Blood. Blood's first episode is just so awesome across the board and this level alone is a huge testament to how unique and varied the environments and locations can often be. So in this one you've hopped onto a cabal train en route to god knows where and your objective is just to get into the engine room and bring the whole thing to a screeching halt. This is going to take you from the front to the back and then back to the front again as you move through the various carriages and deal with zombies and cultists lying in wait. Son of a bitch was dead. The big part of what makes this level so challenging too is the close quarters and the abundance of cultists with sawn off shotguns hiding around almost every corner. In some rooms in particular, they're absolutely jam packed into there, tighter than a nun's asshole. This level also has what I think is one of maybe the hardest rooms in the entire episode. So the last carriage on the train is a dining carriage, I guess, that's full to the brim with cultists. I don't know, I guess they're all on their lunch break or something, and seeing as the door is the only way in, you're basically bottlenecked into taking them all on at once. The consolation is that at the end of the train is a super armor pickup, which is kind of like getting a handjob after being punched in the face. As far as train levels go, this is easily one of the best, and it has some really good one-liners from Caleb too. Get off my train. Leftovers. I must stop this train. End of the line. Following on from that, I guess it's worth mentioning that there's also a train level in Blood 2, though instead what we've got here, aside from a failure to coagulate, is quite literally just the same train level recycled a bunch of times. Compared to the creative and the fun layout and puzzles of the Phantom Express, here you're just having to get from the back of the train to the front, killing everything that gets in your way. I think you replay this maybe like four or five times about the story and about the only thing they modify is that each time you come back here, you're up against more tougher enemies. Still though, it comes across as half-assed, rushed and lazy and yeah, what a perfect way to sum up Blood 2 on the whole. Don't have much luck with trains, do you? Keeping the whole build engine theme going on here, we got a really good train level in Void Point's Iron Maiden. Shit, I'm sorry, Iron Fury. Don't want to get sued. Clean up on aisle your ass. Anyway, like Blood's train level, this one's also pretty damn challenging. Mostly because of the godly accuracy of the enemies, courtesy of the build engine shooting mechanics. This is a relatively short sequence though, but each area of the train is highly detailed, and it always feels like they throw something different at you. When you're moving back to the train to unlock new areas, enemy spawns are going to keep you on your toes. And every time you go outside of a carriage, flying enemies also appear to be a downright nuisance. The tight interiors work both ways, allowing enemies to get off some free hits if you're not careful, but also allowing you to go to town with your explosive weapons, like the bowling bombs. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker! As you'd kind of hope and expect, the whole thing ends with the train exploding and dumping you on a platform of a train station. Because, as we all know, the only thing better than train levels is train station levels, and that's a scientific fact. Damn. That third rail's a killer. Right, now I don't know if this level really counts as a train level per se, but that sequence in Bulletstorm when you're on that huge rail cart thingy was another train level that instantly came to mind. In terms of the sheer scale of things, I don't think anything else in this video even comes close. I mean, not only are you getting chased by enemies on gyrocopters and buggies, but also a chopper that drops off these explosive mines slash torpedoes. My second friction glider incoming! I'm not blind! This is all whilst a literal giant wheel of death is constantly pursuing you. <laughs> right near the end, you've even got to put it off course by blowing up giant fuel tanks which are conveniently placed alongside its path. Sweet. It's just so out of control and over the top, and I love it. It's a great level from a great game that doesn't get enough love or recognition. Oh my god, hit the fucking brakes! 
They're out. The brakes are out. You hear me? Wish like hell I didn't. Also, this has one of the most epic songs in the entire game, soundtrack. And the best bit, if you're playing the Ultimate Edition, you can even play through this whole level as Duke Nukem. Damn. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. Alright, now we've got another train level from another game that doesn't get as much love as it deserves, and that's a level from No One Lives Forever. In this mission, Kate Archer is stolen away on a train in Washington State with the intent to rescue a scientist from the evil organization Harm. For some reason, these guys have also discovered that Kate's on the same train, despite the fact that every one of their members is basically about as clueless as Inspector Cluzo. Well, I haven't seen any spies. If you do, let me know. We don't tolerate spies. I'll keep an eye out. Your objectives are actually pretty creative. For the first part, you've got to find a passenger roster so you can find out where your contact is, whilst also avoiding the conductor until you've found a ticket or else your cover's blown. You can eavesdrop on people's conversations too, which also leads to some pretty funny interactions. I love riding the train. Once you've found your contact, you've then got to make your way to the back of the train, dealing with a bunch of harm henchmen and then detaching the end carriage to make your getaway. Moron. And I think overall it's really fun, and it wasn't the first time Monolith put a train level into one of their games. The only downside is that it's over so quickly. Perfect. There. Off the back of that, this is another one of those levels that's also super short, but also super challenging. And that's riding out the storm in Medal of Honor Frontline, where you find yourself on the back of an armoured Nazi train. You start off with nothing but a pistol, but soon get your hands on the STG-44, one of the guns alongside the M1 Garin that really makes World War II shooters worth playing. From here, you just kind of move from carriage to carriage, clearing house. The hardest part comes early on though, when you've got to blow up another armoured carriage that's shooting at you from the other side of the tracks. And if that ain't enough, you'll have to do this again a few carriages down, all without being killed. Because this is from the golden age of 6th generation games, when checkpoints weren't yet a thing. Right at the end of the level, you catch up to the general you're pursuing, but not before his personal bodyguards show up to defend him, who, unless you know they're coming, are probably going to fill your ass up with STG-44 bullets before you can even blink. All up, it's definitely a level that feels like it's from 2002, but it is still pretty awesome, and the basic technology of that scrolling background still looks impressive. Next up is a train level from a game that I think only 7 or 8 people have actually played, and it's the train level from Outlaws, which is LucasArts' lesser known FPS from way back in 1997. <laughs> Good shooting, mister, but you're already too late. The whole gist here is that you're chasing after the people who murdered your wife and kidnapped your daughter. And early on in the game, you're hauling ass to make it onto a train where your daughter's being held. As you'd expect, you start right at the back and then have to make your way right to the front. Despite being so linear though, this is still a pretty fun level and one thing that's responsible for that is the limited space that the train provides, which really encourages fanning that revolver all the time like your Clint Eastwood. Where are you? And going from cabin to cabin and just emptying into all of these scumbags is pretty damn satisfying. At one point, you can even hop on top of the carriages, which is just awesome. Even though that scrolling background at this point becomes painfully 2D. Obviously, it's not the most visually impressive train level on this list. In fact, it actually rates down as one of the lowest. But the shooting mechanics are fun enough that it doesn't really matter. And with that Ennio Morricone inspired music in the background, it makes for an enjoyable and quick little level. And just like that level in Medal of Honor Frontline, it also ends with the guy you're chasing disconnecting the carriage and escaping. What an asshole. Sarah! Speaking of westerns, a long time before Human Head Studios made the awesome prey, they worked on this lesser known western called Dead Man's Hand, which is something you get after playing Bayonetta too much. Here I come! But sadly, despite their other games being generally pretty top notch, this one ain't all that good. Still though, it does have a train level, which is why it's on this list, and like any good train level set in the Wild West, it begins with your character chasing after the train on your horse and then leaping onto it. It's classic. As you move from carriage to carriage here, you'll have to deal with threats from above and below. At one point, there's a guy on a machine gun up ahead and even a dude riding alongside you on a goddamn horse. You going down! For the last part of the level, you hop on a machine gun and then go to town mowing down all of these good-for-nothing, yellow-bellied outlaws. It's a shame this game controls like horse shit though, or else this level might have been fun to play through. 
Nothing else though, it reminded me of how addictive that poker minigame is that you get to play before the start of each mission. <sighs> what is it with these westerns and train levels? Well, here we go again with another one in Call of Juarez Gunslinger. And a level that might have one of the most badass names out of everything else in this video. Death rides a steel caboose, I mean, damn that's rad. Did I neglect to mention that? In this one you're playing as bounty hunter Silas Greaves, hunting down the famous outlaw Jesse James. Gunslinger came out at that time though in gaming when Call of Duty was king, which kinda means that Gunslinger's adopted a few of those mechanics as its own. Namely, regenerating health and the option to breach into rooms to catch enemies off guard. As a result, subtlety is not really the order of the day here, and the whole thing plays out pretty quickly. Which means you'll be bursting into each carriage by often kicking in the goddamn doors, and then doming a bunch of enemies before they're able to react. Along with taking so many bullets that you think that Silas is like a T-800 or something. I mean honestly, by the end of this level you'll have been shot so much you're gonna look like Swiss cheese. You'll be full of more holes than the Star Wars sequels, get it? Ah, nothing great about that. Despite this game only being 8 or so years old though, it really kind of feels like 80 at this point, and these regenerating health shooters are a boring reminder of one of the genre's most uninspired periods. Thankfully, the tone and feel of Gunslinger's writing and visual effects though makes this slightly more memorable, but this is not one of the more fun levels I played through when I was capturing footage for this video, let's just put it that way. Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you boy. Alright, this is the last western on the list, I swear, but this one's a goodie. It's the opening level for Darkwatch, one of the coolest shooters on the PlayStation 2, which also has one of the best main menus of all time. Not to mention one of the best waifus of all time, too. My name's Tala. Let's mount up. Basically, this game is what happens when you combine the Wild West with vampires and Tim Burton. Playing as outlaw Jericho Cross, in this opening level he's just trying to make ends meet. By robbing a train he thinks has a stash of gold in its vault. But you quickly start to realise that there's more going on here than meets the eye. After a little while you accidentally release a centuries old vampire named Lazarus that was locked inside and then all hell breaks loose, literally. Chivalry is ultimately Jericho's downfall because when trying to save a woman named Cassidy, he's then turned on and turned into a vampire. Doesn't seem to hinder him too much though because what seems like minutes later, you're back on the top of the train, fighting back against Lazarus and a never ending swarm of skeletons as they leap onto the train. Fuck yeah. It's an explosive and really fun opening for what I think is one of the PlayStation 2's most underappreciated and underrated shooters. Did I mention you also get to play through the rest of the game as either a good or evil vampire with superpowers? And look, if that hasn't convinced you to check this one out, well then maybe these three words will. Shotgun, battle axe. Can you really talk about train levels without including this one? That being one of GoldenEye's final few missions set in St. Petersburg where Bond attempts to derail a train and save Natalia. This requires you to get from the back of the train to the front, expectedly, murdering everyone that stands between you and that front carriage. And if you ever tried to beat this mission on that double O agent difficulty mode, well, then my heart goes out to you. Yeah, this level doesn't fuck around, son. Right from the get-go, enemies just start spraying on your position relentlessly. But what I think makes this level so hard, though, is the narrow space you've got to move. Also, the fact that the reload weapon button is the same as opening doors, which means a lot of the time you'll open or close a door when you're trying to reload and vice versa. It's also not helping that every single crate on this train fucking explodes, and that explosion lingers for like 5 seconds. What is kinda cool about this level though, is that if you're able to kill Xenia quickly enough at the end, you won't have to fight her in the next level in the jungle, which saves you a pretty tough encounter. It's nowhere near being the longest level in the game, and compared to some of the others where you've got to escort Natalia and complete a whole bunch of other objectives, it's actually pretty easy. But man, this is definitely one of the toughest levels on this whole list, and I'm sure the bane of a lot of people's childhoods. I guess it kind of makes sense to talk about Time Splitters after talking about Goldeneye, especially considering Time Splitters was worked on by a lot of the same developers. This time, the level in question is the Kalos Express, which was Future Perfect's fourth mission. For this one, we're back again with old mate Harry Tipper and his arch nemesis Kalos, teaming up with Sergeant Cortez as they try to stop him from launching a nuclear missile. And man, this asshole just never learns, does he? 
This again means you've got to make your way from carriage to carriage, dealing with some very familiar looking henchmen, along with not falling off the train and killing yourself. On top of all of that, you've got to stop the train before it runs over Harry's girlfriend, Kitty Celeste. <gasps> all up, I think this is also a great level. That sense of speed you get from how fast this train is hurtling along is communicated really well to the player. Each of the carriages also looks different, so it just doesn't feel like you're going from the same copy-pasted room to the next. Plus, the writing and the tone just perfectly captures everything that makes these games so fun to play. <laughs> Plus, it is kind of hard to fault any level that has Harry Tipper in it. No problem, man. Not to mention one that lets you dual weld MP5Ks. A great game, a great level, and easily one of the all-time best. <laughs> and what better way to wrap this whole thing up with one of the most violent games of all time? Put it at the back of the video, which means YouTube probably won't pick up on it. Yep, it's Soldier of Fortune, one of the few games that lets you remove limbs with the kind of surgical precision that only a pump-action shotgun can allow. This level comes pretty early on in the game, just after you've cleared out that New York City subway from a neo-Nazi hostage situation. Well, now you're in Africa chasing down a nuke being transported across the country. Right from the start, you get this really cool cinematic panning across the train from front to back, showing where all the bad guys are hiding before you're then thrown right into it. You jump from carriage to carriage, leaping across the gaps, taking out all these guys with a shotgun at point-blank range. And look, if you hadn't already fallen in love with the shotgun after that opening level in the subway, well, then you will after this. At one point you've got to deal with a chopper that's chasing after you, and if you're accurate enough, you can even take out the pilot with a well-placed sniper shot. And again, about the only downside to this level is that it's over so quickly. It can literally be finished in a matter of minutes, and I felt like this could have gone on for two or three times the length, and it honestly wouldn't have bothered me at all. You do get a very action hero shot of Mullins running off that train at the end though, as it all explodes, so at least it's a kind of cool way to end it. Speaking of ending things, well, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. I know there's probably a bunch of levels here and there that I might have missed, and the good thing about YouTube comments is that there's always people who aren't shy of telling you what you did wrong. So, if you can think of anything I left out, feel free to share them in the comments section below. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this, I'm always open to suggestions. Anyway, thanks for watching. End of the line.